What's up guys, it's Justin here, and today I've got a video showing you the Nokia 3310 smartphone, which I actually tried to take around with me for an entire day. I'm also going to give away one Nokia 3310 for one of you to play around with, so all you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and also leave a like on this video, and when we hit 1000, I'll announce a winner in the comment section below. So for a bit of a backstory, Nokia announced this earlier this year in an effort to try to pay tribute to one of the most important phones of its time, the Nokia 3310. The original 3310 was a flagship of its time and it's crazy to see how far phones have come in 17 years with the revolution of smartphones, the apps, the cameras even competing with digital SLRs, virtual assistants, and just so many more things that we rely on with our phones today. And it's crazy to look back as to where it all started in a 2017 model. The original 3310 came out in a time where I couldn't even wipe my own ass yet. I was three years old at year 2000. And when this was announced, I just really wanted to go ahead and order it as soon as it was available and just see what it was like to use a phone as if it was year 2000. Because the original phone clearly wasn't a phone of my generation, but for reference, the first phones I actually had were this LG that my dad lost. They found it again on a grocery store parking lot, and it really wasn't able to do much aside from making calls and sending text messages. So I had this for a few years before I dropped it in an ocean. I think I did a full video talking about this. The second early phone I had, I purchased on Craigslist for $40, and I was really excited for it because I had a QWERTY keyboard, but I didn't have a text messaging plan, so I used it for typing out notes. It also had a very basic camera, but I thought it was really cool because it has a pin pad on the front, but also a full QWERTY keyboard on the inside, and it also had two screens and a camera, and at the time, that had me very excited. Generally speaking though, I was pretty late to phones. My parents didn't want to buy me a smartphone because they didn't think I needed one. So I ended up saving my own money to purchase my first iPhone 4 when I was about grade 10, which in this day and age, you see kids with smartphones at like elementary school. But back to the 3310, let's go ahead and just start out by getting the specs out of the way because I'm sure you were curious. This phone has no listed CPU or GPU as that's almost irrelevant at what this phone is intended to do. It has 16 megabytes of internal storage with the ability to upgrade to 32 using a micro SD card. And when you look at the overall form factor, it's really small. It fits in the palm of my hand and it comes in at under five inches by two inches wide and 0.5 inches in thickness. It's made almost completely out of plastic and what the original model was known for as you might have seen recently is its durability and just how tough it was. People were driving cars over it, throwing it off 100 foot cliffs and stuff like that. And I have to say this one isn't as durable as the one before, but it still seems relatively solid and can take a few bumps and bruises, no problem. You can get it in a total of four colors, including glossy yellow, red, and a matte blue and gray. And as for the display, you have a 2.4 inch TFT display with a resolution of 240 by 320 at a 167 PPI. It is colored unlike the original model and is not a touch screen, but it does have a polarized layer for better viewing outdoors, especially in sunlight. Since I've also recently reviewed the newest flagship phones, including the Samsung Galaxy S8s and the LG G6, and we've been spoiled by displays that are of QHD resolution, and minimal bezels at over 80% screen to body ratio on the Samsung, let's just throw this out there that this phone has a 30% screen to body ratio with some nice big yellow bordered bezels and a number pad surrounding it. What it does have that some 2017 phones do not have though is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and also a two megapixel camera with LED flash, which I hope you won't be using much. So I just wanted to give you guys an overview of the experience I had when using the software, because like I mentioned before, this was not a phone of my generation, so I never had the chance to use the original one. So this is my first experience as to what a phone was like in year 2000 when I was three years old. This one right here runs Nokia's 30 plus series OS, and let's just go ahead and play around with the interface. You have 2G cellular support, and unfortunately I wasn't able to test that because this was a European model and I live in Canada. But the menu for the most part remains very simple and is pretty much like a dummy phone. You have your time on the front, your SIM information, your battery indicator on the corner, and there's a go-to menu on the right side, the main menu on the middle, and the camera quick shortcut on the right. This one definitely took me a bit to figure out where everything was and how the buttons worked, but let's just start up by going into the main menu and you can see that everything is laid out very nicely in a nice organized interface, which kind of looks a lot like Apple iOS where you don't have much customizability whatsoever. You will find things such as notes, calendars, calculator, alarm clock, extras, a file folder, um, voice recorder, your camera, an apps and games folder, which you do have an app store that you can download some very basic applications, but really nothing much. You can also store your music, check the weather, 
listen to the radio, watch some videos on the small screen, your settings menu, and also an Opera web browser if that's something that you want to use on 2G. Just going into notes, I'm sure you're not going to want to type your entire essay on this thing because you only have numbers to work with, so that's going to be the method of input. Most millennials like me are probably able to type like 60, 70, 80 words per minute or even more than that on a touchscreen smartphone because that's simply what we're used to, but I do know some people who can type really fast on these type of pin pads. The keys on the 2017 model are all nice and tactile, feel solid, and are also illuminated which is all very nice to see. I've also been hearing a lot of people talk about Snake because that's apparently a very classic game for owners of the 3310, which I know there's a lot of you out there. I just need to figure out how to mute this. Which seems like a cool game, but just watch me play it for a few minutes and you can tell that I'm absolutely terrible. One game that I found really fun though was actually Ashfall, and I was really impressed with the graphics based on the capabilities of this phone and I just didn't expect that. So here's a quick look at that and as you can tell it's just one of those games that is basic but so addicting. So when it comes to software as a whole, aside from basic utilities such as your calendar, your notes, your calling, your messaging, and stuff like that, you also have some applications, some very basic ones to say, but there's definitely a lot of reminiscence of what this phone was like in year 2000 and what we see today in smartphones. Moving on to the camera though, it's a whopping two megapixels and it just kind of goes to remind yourself that this phone costs 50 euros. With that being said, it would have been cool to see them integrate like a budget 2017 caliber camera of like a five megapixel nature or something just a bit better because I can tell you after taking one photo on this, I was not going to use the camera ever again and it even has a digital zoom option which just makes it look so much worse and I know I'm being nitpicky here because this is based off of a year 2000 phone but just take a look at it for yourself. Despite how bad the photos are, the video is pretty bad too. So let's just pretend the camera does not exist at all because I highly advise you do not use it for any reason whatsoever. That's how bad it is. You can probably tell by now though, I'm kind of just making fun of this phone and playing around with it and just giving you my first thoughts of picking up something like this for the first time. One thing that I'm not joking about though is the battery life and that is one of the things that the original 3310 was best known for aside for its durability and it features a 1200 milliamp hour battery that you can remove and can charge up via micro USB. You're definitely expecting some great battery life here because there aren't many pixels to power, there aren't many features, there's not Wi-Fi built in, and there isn't any LTE that it has to power. So for the most part, it's a very minimal phone and I expect the battery life to be really, really good, and it is. The talk time is rated at 22 hours and the standby is about 31 days. And I've had this phone for about five days now, just using it on and off, and I haven't had to charge it a single time. At the end of all this, a lot of people were going to ask why the hell would Nokia release a phone like this in 2017 because it almost seems like a joke, but I can actually think of a few reasons as to why you would want this. First off, because of its standby time, you could definitely put it in like a car glove box as an emergency phone, a backup phone when you go camping or just have something in your backpack. And another thing is if you have a kid who needs his first phone and you want it to just call and maybe have like a game or two to have him shut up while you're trying to get your work done or just take some notes and just some very basic things in general and don't want to spend money because they're probably going to break it then this is a good phone because there isn't any option to use any major applications. So you're not gonna have issues with data overages, which is something that my mom still bugs me about all the time, even though we have 16 gigabytes with TELUS. But in all seriousness, this was a fun phone to play around with. It looks pretty cool, it's tiny, and it has just the basic throwback kind of feel while having 2017 touches to it. Being a 20 year old now though, and checking out a phone that is based on one that came out when I was just three years old, is just a fun experience. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like and drop a comment down below as to how old you were when the Nokia 3310 originally came out. I'll see you guys in the next video.